out there and fish underwater. I think, I mean, it's a little crusty there and a little crusty on this side, but it's a weird flavor in there. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Got him. I'm Zachary Fowler, and this is the seven day island survival challenge. For the next seven days, this island's all mine. To build, to create. I hope this works. To have adventure on. Yeehaw. <laughs> and to catch and cook as many unique things no as I can come up with. Smoke eel sushi in the outdoors. Good morning, another beautiful day. Beard here in my mouth. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, let's get out there and see what this day holds for us. Oh, it's already bright and sunny, look at that. All right, let's see. I think I still got some old coffee from yesterday. I do like my second hand coffee, my day old coffee. I don't really feel like starting a fire. It's already starting to get warm. It's early. I got dishes that need doing, pot, pressure cooker. Oh, canteen. Do my dishes or sit on the dock. Have my quiet time. That's a no-brainer. Sit on the dock. <laughs> Just need to make a cup holder. Beautiful day on the lake with the giant slingshot. <gasps> oh, see? I just said, don't believe in jinxes, but I jinxed myself. I have to make a cup holder. Sure enough, I dipped my coffee. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh, spoiled. Ah, uh, this is what I've been dreaming of since day one. Just sitting out here by my on my little dock, feet in the water. So nice. Oh, now that I've got it all built, I wanna, I wanna stay here for the next 30 days, not just seven. It's like just getting good. Like I, I'm just established now. So it's like, now is would be the time to, you know, continue to go on. Look at this. Isn't this cool? Like. On my dock and like I mean if I was here longer I'd probably build like a little seat thing here so I could like come down and sit up and then if I didn't want to get my feet wet at certain times I could sit here and just fish from right here I just wish there was catfish in here catfish oh then I'd be eating real good <laughs> like, like I haven't been eating real good what have I had so far fish tacos sushi blueberry bacon sauce oh man what an adventure. Phew. Let's see. What do we got for today's reading time? Got my Our Daily Bread. It's amazingly warm and muggy for this time of year. Where is it? I don't know. 
Matthew 6, 28, 30. So why do you worry about clothes? Consider all the lilies of the field, how they grow, that even Solomon, all of his robes of glory, saying, What shall I eat, or what shall I drink, and what shall I wear? I thought about this a lot uh, when I was kind of, you know, well, all the times when I'm out doing, like, survival -y stuff. Because uh, I'm always like, what am I going to eat that day? What am I going to eat that day? But, like, every time, you know, in some way, either God provides or he's uh, provided me with the creativity enough to um, to find a solution make the most of my food by having fish head soup so when I didn't have fish or to uh, come with some new creative trap or trigger system to catch fish better and, and achieve and have fun while doing it. Dear Diary, they say you can do anything you put your mind to. Whoever invented cauliflower pizza certainly thought so. Jury's still out on that. It's nothing quite like a deep dish pizza with a mm, flour crust. Ah, now I'm hungry. And whoever thought about digging up beets and eating those? They're disgusting. Pretty sure God buried them for a reason. Don't think he ever really thought that we would dig them up and try to eat them. I've set my mind to do a lot of things, but no matter how hard I try, I can't make those things taste good. Sick of going to extremes to smell like the outdoors? Well, you don't have to anymore. Foul by Copper John. Fowler by Copper Johns. Hi. Hi. How many tonight? Uh, just two. Sure. Oh, no. Uh, just one. Because you can smell like the outdoors without looking like. Fowler by Copper Johns. 
Today's episode is brought to you by Copper Johns. Uh, they reached out to me a little while back, and at first I was like, oh, I, you know, I, a little bit of beard oil, things like that, that's not that important, but then they sent me their samples. I, I'm not a huge scent guy, I don't like to, I don't use deodorant, I don't, um, you know, I, I don't really care what's in my shower. You've heard me say it before. If you've been watching it for a while, it's like, if the kid's shampoo is in there, then I usually use that until it's all gone and then I buy my own stuff. But they sent me a pack of their scents. Awesome. I, it's like, it makes me want to be a, a better smelling man, honestly. You make me want to be a better man. That's maybe the best compliment of my life. Um, but more than that, as I started thinking about it, there's been a couple of ideas that have been on my mind for uh, a bug dope. Everything they have is very organic, very sustainably harvested, uh, I don't know, stuff like that. You know, it's like, this is the good stuff. It's not just a bunch of chemicals in a bottle. This is legitimately made in the U.S., comes from uh, resources around the world that, uh, you know, so that they can get the really good oils, essential oils to make really, I don't know, for lack of a better word, delicious smelling beard oils, soaps, uh, hard colognes, uh, candles, everything a guy needs to smell good when he's out in the world. You know, the only times I, I, I don't, I say I don't use deodorant, but like going to church, I like to put on a beard oil. But we're teaming up uh, with my idea about the bug dope. That's what I've actually been using out here is our new signature bug dope. It's worked great. But on top of that, Fall Raven pants, they make a wax for your pants to waterproof the seat of your pants and the cuffs of your pants. So I've taken and waterproofed my pants, but this isn't just any sort of wax waterproof. Copper Johns and I made a waterproofing wax that has the same kind of essential oils that repel bugs and ticks and I put it into the pants before I came out here and I put it into the hat. It just seems to have worked so well I haven't been chewed on, I haven't had a tick on me, and I've been playing in the bushes, pushing through the bushes, all the time, stuff. Now it doesn't seem to be a problem. So check out that link in the description below for our sponsor, Copper Johns. And don't forget those other two most important links in the description below if you want to know about any of the gear. There's a gear video down there, linked in every one of the videos, as well as a playlist. So if you just tuned in, you're going to want to go back and start from the beginning with day one. Ugh. Need to have some breakfast. Oh, yeah. Eh, just put it all over him. Soy sauce him up again. Still wishing I had the wasabi. These were so good last night when I made these. I can't believe I made sushi in the outdoors. Eel, eel sushi. Smoked eel sushi, not raw. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was a bad idea. I bit it in half and that just made a mess of it. That smoked flavor. Mmm. I think I like it best with the ginger right on top of it. So you eat it all together. Mmm. Now, what to do with the rest of my day, huh? I think I'm gonna build a chair. Something I wanted to do, but I've been kind of lazy. <laughs> As a joke. It'd be fun to come out here with somebody else and not just do this alone for an, an, uh, just a single overnight or something. So I had this idea of a different type of chair that would almost be more comfortable than the ones I've built in the past. More of a park bench kind of thing. And because it's a park bench kind of thing, if you are by yourself, there's plenty of room to throw some uh, stuff on it. I wonder if you put one of these little kernels of rice, since they can look kind of like a little bit of a grubbish type thing, with soy sauce on it. Threw that on the hook, I threw it out there if the fish would go after it. All right, let's build something. All right, I'll do my dishes first. Alright, let's see. 
got a table here, fire there. The wind almost always goes that way or that way. So I don't want to put a bench over there. I think I always walk through right here. But the cooler is just sitting there. So if I put a bench right there, There we go. My table, my cooler thing locks in place. Got my nice bench so I can sit. All right. <laughs> I finished my camp on day six. 
Would have been nice to have this all set up the whole time, huh? I could sit by the fire, eat my food, cook, cut, and wash, and this is a pretty awesome camp. I'm pretty excited about this. Oh, all that work made me hungry and kind of sweaty. I think, uh, dip in some food. All right, I got my rod. One of these guys I bought from Carl's Bait and Tackle. And I'm gonna try and go out there and fish underwater with my snorkel and mask and see if I can't catch one while being underwater. This is something I've always dreamt of. I haven't had a chance to try it again. Try it, well, ever. So, here we go. I say again, because I did at one point, I had a lure in my hand one time that I found underwater, but I didn't catch anything. So this time, we'll see if we catch something. No luck. I'm a total bonehead. I had all this wonderful stuff from our sponsor here and uh, I totally, I could have taken this open to the water with me. I picked the Mountain Breeze Beard Oil for after. So we'll condition with their wash here. <laughs> I feel like I'm at the the barber shop to dip my beard in the water here and Oh my goodness that smells so good. Get it right in there. Oh yeah. Work up a good lather. Mmm. Let's work it in real good. My beard has never been necessarily the thickest beard in the world. I had a dream one night because it felt like thin and I noticed like if I went beard bald, like what would that be like? What would I look like? I was joking the other day about shaving it. That was a mistake. Just kidding. But what would happen to me if I went beard bald? Does that even happen to people? Okay, yeah, there's a picture of me when I was younger without a beard. Not recommended that you do it this way. Just do it when you're in your shower. I'm singing in the shower. Singing in the tub. Here we go, now we're gonna put some of the uh, woodsy breeze. I'll put that in there, Ta da Perfect, oh, a little bit in the mustache. I can, I can, it smells just like this breeze that's coming through the trees. Oh, once again, you guys are missing out. You know, let's smell a vision. Wouldn't that just be humbling to Luke go beard bald? I have to start a new YouTube channel. I 
think I need to make some dinner. I think it's, I'm gonna make some dinner. Make some food. I keep saying I was gonna do this and do that. I always say that. I always have more plans than I have time for it. But I think I'm gonna make a dinner with that fish that I caught last night with the slingshot. There's also frogs. I did want to get a frog when I was out here and do a frog meal. I only have today and tomorrow. Food first, then I'll think more clearly. Yeah, let's do this. Sure, I like my bench. Feels almost a little bit out of place. It's so pedestrian. Like it's so nice that it's like almost corny. I mean, it's it's super functional and super comfortable. I finally decided, like, it's been perfect. The wind's been going this way and that way and that way and that way, every way but over here. So I'm gonna build my bench here. And now it's, well, good thing I made the bench longer. All right, so fire's going. And we got our jalapeno, bass, bacon, cheddar, nuclear, Last time I made uh, poppers. Mmm, that has to be the most delicious thing I've ever made. But these, this thing's a, a bomb. I'm calling this the jalapeno bacon bass popper nuke. No, that can't be popper nuke. Jalapeno bass bacon. Jalapeno bass bacon cheddar nuke. Jalapeno bass bacon cheddar nuke with blackened garlic all over the bass. Oh, oh yeah, and there's rice in there. So it's more of a casserole rolled up in bacon that we're gonna hopefully cook. I, I'm like, oh, I'm hungry, I wanna eat something now. 
This thing's gonna take like six hours to cook. Hmm. Maybe if I get some coals just the right way, I can uh, take and cover the whole thing over and leave it in there. And then I'll, I'll scoot out and enjoy myself some uh, evening bass fishing before, but since I don't really need to catch anything right now. Let's see if I can figure some way to make that so it slow cooks while I'm gone. take a little bit of the water and pour it around the fire I'm not gonna go far and that's all green wood so it won't even burn I'm actually gonna leave this right down here full of water because I'm only gonna go over that little rock pile right there and the dock and along that shore Uh, more and more I can't get over the fact that how beautiful this place is and I you know it's like if I spend all my time exploring I wouldn't have been have time to build something if I spend my time cooking I don't have time to build something or if if I spend all my time fishing I don't there's just not enough time in the day sometimes you know I need I need a month to really just explore this place or, or like, buy a lake house here so I could just be here all the time. Ugh. I'd probably, if I owned a lake house here, I'd become really lazy. I'd never make another YouTube video again. I just, or maybe I'd make a YouTube video every day and everybody would be bored because it would just be me here playing in the water and fishing <laughs> and cooking. I mean, I don't know if that, how long that would just become before it became boring for you guys. I can't believe it would ever become boring for me being right here. Like this is just, We're at the little buoy here, I guess this is a rock pile. I'll try that lure from earlier. If you're wondering why I got earbuds in, I'm listening to a series by Dr. David Jeremiah on Romans 8. I just, I have gotten a little bit uh, tired of the sound of my own voice just talking to the camera or just being quiet. Oh, I just cast right over that buoy. If I don't hook that line on that buoy, it's going to be a miracle. Yep, there we go. Of all the places to cast, got the whole wide ocean in front of me. Not ocean, lake. And I just managed to cast right over the buoy. What is it into? Oh, <laughs> I got it back. That was a big old rock. Should come around here and swim around this. There we go. Ah, oh, I lost him. Mm, oh Lord, won't you give me a fish for fun? I've got my dinner, but you know me, I'd always like another one. What day is it? Tuesday. Oh, there's a poor little bee. Would he hurt me if I tried to rescue him? Well, I gotta reel in, buddy. There. I rescued him. Oh, now he's gonna try to sting me. Oh, and my lure didn't get stuck. That What a wonderful day. Gotta do everything we can for the bees. All right, well you hang out there. I don't think you'll be able to, I don't know if he's gonna be able to fly. 
You know what I need? A big old crankbait. <gasps> oh, wait. Where's my new guy? I have not tried him. Let's try him. How, when it was not tangled at all, it's, it baffles me how this happens sometimes. When things weren't tangled at all, two seconds later, one little boom, and then all of a sudden, there's 15 knots. Mind you, I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. Because if I didn't, you'd feel left out. I've got that new 15 pound leader on here so that it can, I can really yard on it. If as soon as it bites, it pops up, it can pop up. It doesn't pop up, mind you, but it's hinged so it can. I just think that's the coolest thing. Coolest lure of the year. Oh, he's moving. Stay away from my... Don't make me regret rescuing you. I laugh my head off if I'm paddling along and all of a sudden he takes flight and the wind coming this way. After everything I did for you, I swallow a bee and get stung in the throat and have to go home early on a seven day survival challenge. Guy makes it 87 days, 30 days in the Rockies, 30 days with rattlesnakes in Texas and gets taken out by a bumblebee, a bee, not even a bumblebee, a bee that he rescues while kayaking. <laughs> Sweet home. Let's see if our dinner's done. That is so cool. <laughs> All right, let's dig her out of the fire and see if there's anything edible left in it. It does seem a little deflated. Here's sizzling. That's a good sign. I didn't end up doing the tomatoes in with it because I didn't want it to be, if it was really rich, then the tomatoes I could use with a bite with the tomato so it was offsetting it, right? This might just be the first thing I've ever done that turns out to be complete garbage. My guess is that the bacon's ruined but everything else inside can be scooped out and is delicious. All right, moment of truth. Lots of burnt ooze out so far. As I thought, most of the bacon appears to be in fairly rough shape. Foil still burnt to it. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, that was just the end that was really messed up. At that end, this end has a cheesy a lot of jalapeno and stuff sticking out. Carve away some of that. I'll just chop that end right off. How about that? Not too shabby. I think, I mean, it's a little crusty there and a little crusty on this side, but the underside looked decent enough. A little crunchy on the bacon. I like mine a little more wriggling. All right, Lord, thank you for this food. Uh, bless this food to my body, body. and uh, bless this evening's frog hunt. Maybe we'll get, get, see if we can get a frog for breakfast. In Jesus' name, amen. That's something I've wanted to do, and people always commented, like when they see me had frog legs a couple years back, and I guess it has been a couple years. Um, 
that uh, to do a whole frog, you know, there's some, I don't know who it is, but somebody had left in the comments, you know, why are you wasting all that good frog meat and just ripping the legs off? And, and I was like, well, thinking to myself, like, well, that's what people do. And so that's what I did, and that's all I've ever seen people do. And and then I Googled it, and I saw, like, Indonesian people, they, they do the whole thing. Like, so I was like, I felt a little self-conscious about that. Like, you know, I'm just ripping the legs off and throwing them back. They're not like crabs that if they manage to survive, they, they grow another claw, right? I think I'm going to go snag a frog, and we'll put them on ice. And, uh... I think that's the first thing I'm going to do tomorrow is cook. It's a weird flavor in there. I wonder if it's that, that blackened garlic. Ah. Oh. That's disgusting. Uh, that's the first time I made something kind of inedible. That fish is not edible. That's disgusting. It's so gross. It tastes so fishy. Like, I never say that, but like, I've never tasted something so fishy. Maybe this piece of cheese is okay. That was awful. That was horrible. All, all I can taste is that disgusting fish. Uh, maybe by putting it in the cooler on ice for the night, it just, it brought, the, the fishy flavor came to the front. I have no doubt that I'm sure it's fine to eat, but it does not taste fine. That is the first time it, I mean, ugh. That's a fail. I mean, I've done that a couple times already where I caught a fish ahead of what I need to do and I'm like, oh, I'll cook it the next day. And the other ones I cooked the next day, they were great. Maybe something about that black and garlic. I didn't even taste the garlic. It just like brought the fishiness out of it. Oh, I'm glad I had that sushi. This was a Total bomb. Wow. Like even the the non-burnt part of the bacon. Well, that's kind of okay. That's not okay. That's not okay. All the love and kindness was cooked out of it. I screwed this all up. I don't even want to eat the tomatoes to see like fruit flies crawling all over them. I screwed this up big time. I don't know what to even do with this. I haven't wasted anything the whole time I've been here. And go dig a hole, I guess, and bury it. Hide my shame in a hole of dirt. All right, got our stick. A couple nubbly bits still on it. Where's my knife? Make a frog gig. See if we can't get something better for breakfast. I'm gonna be powerful hungry after not uh, having much of a dinner, eh? Yeah. I wish you could spear fish. Didn't mean that to be rhyming. All right, we got a water bottle I found in the woods. This is like one of my favorite little things to do. Making cordage, so satisfying. I don't know if that cut straight enough though. This thing is the coolest little gadget, gadget, gizmo, whatever you wanna call it, right? You just feed your bottle through there and once you get in the rhythm it turns that whole bottle into cordage and then the cool thing is when I tie the frog gig on I just heat it over the fire and that cordage shrinks as 
super satisfying to turn a bottle. I gotta go slow with this one because it's all warped. But you can, like a two liter bottle, you can just be like zzz, 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 zzz. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Ha! Right down to the last little bit. And I got all of this. Get out our card, gigging card. Probably the, the Poseidon here. The three spikes would be nice. And I killed a guy with a trident. It's got this two pointer. I can put that in the center of the stick. Make a split and stick that down in there. Wrap this one, Poseidon spike, and bend that around the stick and then lash it on with the plastic and then heat the plastic. Boom. Ow, that's sharp. Careful. Jeez, I don't know, I kind of feel like that's all I need. Like that's, that's plenty, right? I just need to wrap it and shrink it so that it doesn't come off. All right, so I'm just gonna lay it on there flat and kind of tuck the tail underneath. There we go three quarters of an inch of that thing into the wood. Before, and I'm gonna break it. <laughs> I think that did it. Oh, look at that. That shrunk up so perfectly tight. It's like, let me check with a, uh, my tool here, see if it can come out. Nope. That's not coming out. Let's go get some frogs. Push. Pushing off. Go around the other side of the island where it's all weeds and and stuff. Well, that's creepy. What is that? White thing in just the middle of darkness. Oh, it's a jug on a line. I think somebody was jug fishing and lost their jug. All right, I paddled all the way over to the other side of the lake. I'm almost to my spot. I've just been enjoying the moon and the just, <laughs> it doesn't look like anything on the camera. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. You can't see it, but there's like a little mist on the black of the water. Now, find frogs. This is kind of a sandy bottom swamp. I don't really feel like walking around in it, but if that's what it takes. How deep is it? Not too deep. There we go. Feels like the perfect place for leeches. Not that I'm afraid of leeches, mind you. I hear a frog somewhere in there. Here, froggy, froggy. I 
good to spot it a frog. Yep. He's right in there by the bow of the boat. Not where I was expecting. I saw his eye. That is a big one for Maine. Got him, I think. Oh yeah, I got him. Oh my goodness, he's big. Oh yeah, I got him good. Oh, he's trying to wrap around his stick. Oh yeah. Oh no. No. Oh, he got off. Big one right over there by the shore. No. He got away. I can't believe I missed. I totally wiggled. I'm just going up in the woods after him. I feel like if he swam off, he could have gotten away. But he's up in the bushes on the island here. There he is. I got, got a second chance. Oh, I lost him. My last chance. Got him. I got him good. Ugh, completely eviscerated him. Whew, one frog. Holy cow. It's like midnight. It's right at my dock. Food came to me. There he goes. Big old snapping turtle. He's like, I'm out of here. I thought about eating a snapping turtle, but this is more of a fun catch and cook. If I was out surviving, surviving, doing 30 days, I'd be trying to put every calorie into me. All right, I am in for the night, and sorry, but you're going to have to tune in for the final episode, day seven, if you want to know what happened. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Fowler out.